Hello everyone, my name is Justin. I'm here to show off a tool called Lineman, and Lineman helps you build web applications. Uh, before we get started, it's important that you already have Node.js installed. Uh, Lineman depends on Node, and uh, Node comes with npm, which is a package manager for Node. We're going to install two things to get us started. First is Grunt. Grunt is sort of like Make, but for JavaScript. Uh, it's very similar to Rake in Ruby. Grunt was written by a guy named Ben Allman. It's a really fantastic tool, and re it really, honestly, it's at the heart of what Lyman's all about. Uh, Lyman's just kind of a pretty convention and configuration layer on top to help you get started really quickly when you're building web applications. Grunt is general purpose. Get started installing Lyman. And because Lyman pulls in a whole bunch of Grunt tasks, it's got a lot of uh, dependencies. Now, my hope is that you're asking at this point, why do I need this tool if my server-side framework already includes a way for me to deliver JavaScript and CSS to the browser? Our reasoning is that increasingly the applications we write really start to resemble two separate projects. We have a single page app that's written in JavaScript, uh, has totally different concerns than our server-side application, which is just serving up JSON APIs. We think there's a lot to be gained by separating it. For one, you can replace either component without worrying about the other. But more importantly, it just forces us to design small, focused applications. OK, the install is done. Let's get started. You can do that by using the Lyman new command. And I'm going to call it hello. Hit enter. So you can see it's created me a directory. And inside that new directory, it's running npm install to install all the dependencies that my project depends on. So even though we're using Node, we're using Grunt, uh, at the end of the day, all we're going to be distributing is just normal HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Uh, Lyman creates a disk directory for you after you've built everything, and that can be hosted on any server that can host static files. So that's the beauty of it. And once this is done, we'll see all of Lyman's various commands. Because Lyman really is both a productivity tool and also a build tool. The productivity side uh, can be seen in Lyman Run. It starts a web server as you develop that you can test against locally. So let's get started and use that first, and then we'll talk about the other commands later. Oops, I forgot to cd into hello first. cd hello, lineman run. And this is going to start a uh, long running process uh, using grunt watch. It's already started a server for us, so I can type localhost 8000. And I see hello world. Excellent. So let's take a quick look at what that gives us. So our, our uh, hello world application includes a whole bunch of stuff, including app, CSS, image, JavaScript, templates, all of our templates, and in this case, CoffeeScript go here. It searches recursively and automatically concatenates for us. In config, we can override uh, settings that are defined in Lyman's configuration. The file globs and file load order can be overridden here, and you can see what the parent looks like here. Our spec configuration. Uh, vendor assets go in here, and they're loaded before the application assets, CSS, image, JavaScript. We can add custom tasks if we want to. And if we were writing uh, Jasmine specs, uh, it already comes preloaded with the helpers that I maintain, uh, but you can you know, add them recursively however you like. So here's an example spec. So let's keep. Looking at uh, this hello world, we can change any of these files because it's watching. So if I change this color here to say some red, it'll almost instantaneously be updated. Change this random line of text. Goodbye world. And even though it's got to compile the CoffeeScript and reconcatenate it all, uh, you know, for for the local server, it's very very fast. I've been very impressed with Node's ability to. Um, uh, do file operations quickly. Let's take a look at the spec. So we wrote a spec already. It says hello, and its uh, assertion is that you know the the result of that hello text function that we look at be hello world. Well, we already messed that up. So let's write the run the test and see what happens. I hope it will fail. We do that by writing just lineman spec. I hit enter, and this is going to launch testum in Chrome by default. So we see uh, our stack trace here. And we could we could you know launch this Chrome window, but we could just as well hide that uh, and only really operate out of the terminal. So let's fix it. And go back up to our CoffeeScript here and say hello world. I save the file. And you, unfortunately, we weren't able to see it happen just live. So get it wrong again. 
it fails, fix it, hit save, and in under a quarter second it's been re-executed. Well, let's keep playing though with Testum a little bit because it's just such a fantastic tool. Let's pretend, for instance, we were worried that a test was going to pass in Chrome and fail in Safari for some strange reason. I can just look up that URL here and run it and see the exact same spec running locally in Safari, and if I make a change to the file, again, messing it up, they'll both run, they'll both execute. Now, um, uh, there's also PhantomJS, and I'd like to launch a PhantomJS runner too, so I'm going to quit real quick and go back to my configuration for the specs. I can add new browsers that are launched by default here. So I'm going to say PhantomJS. PhantomJS is a separate dependency, and uh, you didn't, might install that with brew install PhantomJS, or go to their website, download it. And I'm going to run line and spec again. So Safari, Chrome, it still saw those running, so it just reconnected to them. PhantomJS. So, so Phantom even, even though it's totally headless, it also sees that the test succeeded. Um, and I want to go one further. I want to also launch the uh, iOS simulator. I'm currently working on a mobile web application, so it's important to me that my specs pass in iOS, and even though things are really simple right now. It's always worth running your tests in the environment that they're actually going to write. And you can see iPhone Safari just got picked up like magic. So what blows my mind is I can just go and change this test again, or change the code, break the test. It'll even reload the, the, uh, the runner in my iPhone app, or on my I iOS simulator. Really, really cool. And I just kind of keep this tucked away at the bottom of the screen all day while I work. Uh, and I can, I can, you know, sort of see my TDD productivity uh, uh, as I go without, you know, much cognitive overhead. Really like it. One last thing I want to show you is how to do a build and how to run your specs in CI. So if I'm running my specs in CI, I use the spec-ci command. And this is only going to run in PhantomJS, only going to run the test once, and uh, it just works really well with Jenkins or whatever your CI tool might be. And it outputs in a uh, standardized format called TAP13 that uh, uh, more and more reporting tools are able to clue in on. So you can include it in whatever other reporting uh, for, for your testing that you might have on, uh, say, for instance, the server-side app component that might go with your Lyman app. You can also say Lyman build, and this is going to all do everything the previous test did, but instead of write, run the tests, it's going to minify uh, my distribution. And I can check out this disk directory here. So it's got uh, some JavaScript and some CSS. It's been minified. You can see it's been minified here in the preview. And if I open it up, Hello World still runs. So yeah, that's Lineman. Thanks a lot for watching. Uh, we had a lot of fun writing it, and if you've got any questions or feedback, we'd appreciate it.